Dr. Paul Mason. Fiber does not help constipation. This myth is not based on serious research. In a nutshell, the problem with constipation is you're trying to pass something through a small hole and fiber makes that something bigger. So how on earth did we think that making something bigger would make it easier to pass through our anal sphincter? And so, so if you think about it logically, like I'd say, oh yes, but it might be the fluid retention. Nope, not because way back in the 1970s, they actually measured the, the moisture content of stool of people with lots of fiber and stool and people with no fiber in their diet. No difference. So it's not the fluid. So is it the consistency? Nope, not that either. So what is it? It's somebody came up with an idea once, probably to try and sell some cereal. And they basically, you know, pulled the wool over the eyes of most of the doctors who are still practicing today. The, when I was, I was writing a chapter for a, a medical textbook and I was writing the section on fiber and I was trying to go find the original references. And I said, okay, well, this, this will be easy. You know, fiber good for constipation. I just need to find the reference. I could find guidelines. I couldn't find an original study. So I looked at the studies I was citing and they said, okay, fiber increases the size of the stool. And it's like, sure, we know that. Um, but that's patients don't come to me. I've never had a patient come and go, doc, you know, my, my fecal matter is too small. Do you think you could bulk it out a bit? That's not what people complain about. Other studies on increasing the transit time uh, can help, you know, passage through the gastrointestinal tract a little bit quicker. Again, I've never had anybody say, you know what, doc, it's, uh, I've got a 72 hour transit time at the moment. Do you think you could just speed it up a bit? Patients don't care. They care about pain. They care mm -hmm. about bloating. They care about bleeding. They care about these things that cause them physical discomfort. So, I wanted to, these are the, this is how we diagnose constipation based on symptoms. So I went looking for the research, the science based on the symptoms and I couldn't find any randomized control trials. There was none. So what I could find, the best experimental study I could find, um, it was still an experimental design and it had people who were on their normal, they had, I think it was 63 patients um, with idiopathic constipation, which basically means constipation of no known cause, which is what basically most people with constipation will be diagnosed with. We'll say, we don't know why you're constipated, but it's fine, it's normal. So, so these guys are already on a relatively high fiber diet on average. So some of them were put on a very high fiber diet. Some of them were put on a medium fiber diet. Some of them were put on a low fiber diet. And then they pulled a rabbit out of the hat. And then they put a bunch of them on a zero fiber diet. So 41 of them actually ended up on a zero fiber diet. So they had like these five symptoms of constipation. Um, and every single participant on the zero fiber diet had complete resolution in all five domains. Okay? But most commonly, is cheese, dairy. So the beta casein can be metabolized into an, an opiate-like compound in some people. Okay. And we know what the effects of opiates are on the gastrointestinal tract. It, it reduces gastric motility. So there's something about dairy in a subset of the population that seems to uh, be constipation provoking. So if somebody's on a carnivore diet and they're having symptoms of constipation, cutting out dairy is the first thing to try. Does fiber help constipation? Well, the problem is that we are trying to pass something through a small hole. Fiber makes that something bigger. So how on earth did we think making something bigger would help it pass through the anal sphincter? Perhaps it is the fluid retention of fiber. No. In the 1970s, studies measured the fluid content of stools, those of high fiber diet, those of no fiber diet. Result, no difference in the fluid retention. Perhaps it is the consistency. No. Someone came up with an idea once, probably to help sell cereal, and pulled the wool over the eyes of most of the doctors, who are mostly still practicing today. Dr. Mason says, while I was writing a chapter for a medical textbook, for the section on fiber, I tried to find the original references. I could only find guidelines. I could not find any original study. What I did find was fiber increases the size of the stool. But patients never say, please increase the size. He also found that fiber increases the transit time slightly. But again, patients never ask for a slightly faster transit time. Patients care about pain, bloating, bleeding. So Dr. Mason says, I looked for randomized control trials on symptoms, but could find none. 
The best experimental study I found, 63 patients with idiopathic constipation, meaning unknown cause. Three groups, very high fiber, medium fiber, low fiber diets. And then they added one more group, zero fiber diet. They checked the effect on the five symptoms. The result, every zero fiber patient had complete resolution of all five symptoms. Dr. Gland asks, do people eating carnivore, animal-based diet, have constipation problems? Dr. Mason says, sometimes, mostly with cheese or other types of dairy. The beta casein can be metabolized into an opiate-like compound in some people. This reduces gastric motility. There is something in dairy for some in the population that seems to be constipation provoking. So if you're on a carnivore diet and have constipation, check dairy first. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones.